Hey folks, welcome back. Okay, this teaching is going to be specifically dealing with accumulation, manipulation, and distribution. Okay, the ICT concepts used in this module, the ICT power of three, importance of developing anticipatory price skills, engineering liquidity in the market, neutralizing liquidity in the market, market making and pairing of orders, what accumulation looks like in bull and bear conditions, where does manipulation occur in bull and bear conditions? What distribution looks like in bull and bear conditions? All right, so we're looking at a crude depiction of a open high low close bar. And for the purposes of this teaching, every individual bar or candle is going to be referred to as a daily range or daily bar. Okay. Now, everything I'm going to suggest to you here is applicable to every time measurement. Okay. In other words, every time interval, if it can be charted, the same phenomenon or concept can be applied to it. So, regardless of what time frame you can pull up and form it into a chart, as long as you have a beginning time, the highest value, the lowest value, and an ending. In terms of measuring time, this concept is applicable. Okay, but for the sake of our discussion here, uh, and for something that you can practice and look for a few times a week, uh, the ICT Power Three is basically a concept of looking for accumulation, waiting for manipulation, and then looking for a period of distribution. Now, I look at candlesticks because it helps to be able to see after many years of looking at price action it's very hard on your eyes as long as i've been doing it staring at it, spending lots of time in charts both on a screen and on paper uh, i can see that my my eyesight has diminished over the years one of the benefits of knowing what you're looking for is spending far less time in the charts than most traders that like me and before me we spent a lot of time researching and looking at things. So I gravitate towards candlesticks because it's easier on the eye. Not that there's any magic behind it, but the same concept that's seen here with a bullish open high low close bar to the left is comparable to what you would see in a bullish close candlestick. Much, much easier to see by staring at uh, that versus that little tick to the left or the little tick to the right that distinguishes the open and close on individual candles or bar. Okay, so back to our discussion. Using the open high low close bar, it's going to be a lot easier for me to describe the phenomenon that makes up my ICT Power 3. And the origination behind this idea was inspired by my mentor, Larry Williams. Uh, he made a point in one of his lectures that he ended up repeating several times uh, for a number of years, but he made a point of making a remark about he wished he knew how the traders or who the traders were that could be buying uh, below the open or selling above the close on bullish or up close days. And I took that as a personal challenge <laughs> and I spent uh, the first quarter of my 25 years mastering just that concept because I felt that it was enough for me to work towards, you know, cracking that code, if you will. And I think I've done it. Um, I've taught it to other people. So I know that it's something that is real. It's tangible. It can be repeated not only in my own results, but other people that have learned from me. But it all hinges on the reference point that starts our time interval. And again, we're referring to every bar or open high, low, close bar depiction in my diagrams as a representation of one daily bar. Okay, so a full 24 hour period. It does not matter that if it's Forex or commodities or bonds or whatever it is, 
if it's a market and it can be measured in time intervals, the highest value, the lowest value, a time at which it starts trading and at time it ends trading, you only need those four reference points. So the open, high, low, and close is all we're concerning yourself with here. Now, the first of the four is the opening price. Now, for definition terms, this is the initial value price prior to any imbalance. And I'll talk more about that as we go. The closing price is the ending value price post price imbalance. Okay, the portion that makes up the range between the open and close is referred to as range expansion, and this is a dynamic price imbalance. Now, this can be a bullish or bearish imbalance relative to the open, but for example's sake, our first one's going to be referring to a bullish up close. So this would be a bullish range expansion or a dynamic price imbalance of a lot more movement to the upside, seeking a higher price above the initial value price of the opening price. In layman's terms, we're looking for a bullish close. Okay, now as far as it goes in terms of accumulation, manipulation, and distribution, or power three, the first thing we have to determine is what is accumulating. Now, if we're bullish on the marketplace, we would be looking for accumulation in the form of long positions building up. It's going to be around that opening price, and I'll talk more about the opening price in, in future tutorials. But the opening price, just above it or below it when we're bullish, that's where longs are accumulated. Now, who's accumulating those long positions? Smart money. When we're bullish and we're anticipating a bullish range expansion to the upside, okay, or a higher close, we would be hunting a manipulation cycle immediately after the opening price. So on a daily range, that opening price, if we're bullish, we want to be buying at that opening price or below it, ideally. Why would we want to be buying below the opening price when we're bullish? Because the market makers are going to be looking to engineer short liquidity. What does that mean? If a market breaks quickly below an old low, there are traders that look to be a breakout entry. So they'll look to sell short on a stop. This engineering forces liquidity in the marketplace to sell at a very, very low price. That run below an old low or a quick sudden movement will entice traders that are on the sidelines just watching price. And you know what that feels like if you've watched lower time frame charts. Any sudden move lower, your heart starts to have palpitations. You get excited. You think it's going to keep going lower. What happens? You take the bait. You go in there and you sell short. And the market stops on a dime, reverses, and goes north. Immediately below the opening price on the daily range, when it's bullish, this in initial drop down is very significant because it's going to engineer willing parties to sell short. That selling short will flood the market with the counterparties to smart money wanting to buy it at a deep, deep discount. The other form of manipulation that takes place when it's bullish is neutralizing long liquidity. That means there's individuals that's probably already long or just recently bought near the opening price and the drop down below the opening price will upset their long position. In other words, it'll just run their stop. Not to engineer them into a new lower entry, but to knock them out of an initially well-placed position. So we're seeing two conditions are happening at the same time. The opening price and below it, when we're bullish, is knocking individuals out that's right, that would otherwise be profitable if the market rallies. And it's also inducing or engineering of short-term sentiment shift to bearishness by running short-term lows. Not only would we take out long holders with their sell stops, but traders that want to sell short on a stop, they would be in, they would be placed in on the market. On the wrong side. In other words, selling short in an otherwise bullish market.
So finally, as we interpret this, the manipulation is we're looking how the market makers pair orders. By pairing these sell stops with smart money buying interest, we can see the manipulation cycle as it really is. A run below the opening to accumulate long positions before the big up move. And finally, the distribution cycle where smart money pairs its long exits, selling out of their longs, with pending buy interest. Now that pending buy interest is going to be in the form of buying above an old high. That would be a breakout artist's idea. They're going to want to break out above a previous high, and they would view that as strength, buying strength. Well, smart money will look to sell their long position to those breakout artists that want to buy above an old high. Or those individuals that would probably try to sell short intraday, they would have a buy stop above an intraday high. Smart money would look to run through that intraday high and sell it to those buy stops. So their long end exits would be paired with a short-term intraday swing high. If we've seen a nice little retracement lower intraday before the close, that's where an area of distribution would come in. So we're looking at a reverse idea here. The open high low close with a down close. And again, this representation is a, a crude depiction of a daily open high low close bar. And we could see that same thing in the form of a bearish closed candle. Much easier on the eye, but we're going to take our focus back to the open high low close bar. And again, the opening price, much like we just said, but just for completeness sake, it is the initial value price prior to any imbalance. The closing price is the ending value price of that time interval that you're measuring. In other words, what time frame you're looking at. And if this is daily, it's the ending value for the daily range post or after the price imbalance. In other words, the, the movement that took place between the open and where it's now closing. And we have the range expansion cycle that is basically dynamic price imbalance. So between the opening price and the closing price, when we're bearish, this is what we would be expecting or anticipating in price, okay, a lower close. Now, in the form of power three, what is accumulating? Well, from the opening, when we're bearish, short positions are building up. And who's building up short positions? Smart money. At the opening price or just above the opening price when we're bearish, we would be anticipating manipulation. And what form of manipulation would we expect to see? Engineering long liquidity. In other words, we're looking for a quick sudden movement higher to entice breakout artists that want to buy, want a breakout, and they would be placed in on the wrong side of the marketplace. Another form of manipulation, this would be neutralizing short liquidity. In other words, those individuals that would already be short in the marketplace that would otherwise profit from the future coming decline, they are knocked out by having their buy stops tripped. So they're neutralizing their short position and their short position being neutralized is a buy stop. So that buy stop that hits the market as a market order, smart money will sell to their willing buy stop. So in other words, if the market trades up to your buy stop, that buy stop becomes a market order to buy at the market. Smart money will be counterparty to that. They will sell to those buy stops, but their sell position is to ride it lower and make money. Manipulation in its truest sense is in this form, when we're bearish at the opening price or above it, buy stops are being paired with short interest on in the form of smart money. And finally, at the end of the day, the distribution cycle is seen where smart money pairs its short exits or covering with pending sell interest. In other words, smart money is going to be short and to get out of their short positions, they have to buy it back and they will be targeting some old low. What would be resting below an old low? Sell stops. Those sell stops, once they're triggered, they become market orders to sell at the marketplace, which floods the market with sellers. And the best time to cover a short is when there's a flood of sellers in the marketplace willing to sell at a low price. And this would be the distribution cycle of the daily range.
Okay, so what does accumulation look like in a bull condition or when it's bullish? It's not important that we zoom in here and see any of the details. I just wanted you to see the overall characteristics. In the green shaded area, you can see that there's a consolidation around the opening price, and that consolidation leads way to a decline, which gives us the framework for what does manipulation look like in a bull condition. Well, this is what manipulation looks like right before the market starts to trade higher after consolidation when the accumulation of longs are being made. The problem is you see that decline below that green shaded area as weakness. And who would be wanting to buy ahead of that? Smart money traders, okay, they have very deep pockets. And the market has a tendency of creating this fake move, okay, where it entices or induces the opposite mindset or sentiment. This drop down out of that consolidation when we're overall bullish is manipulation. It's knocking out short-term lows. So anyone that's long, they're knocked out. They can't profit from the up move. And it's also putting traders in on a breakout short, and they're going to be on the wrong side of the marketplace. And then finally, at the highs of the day, we have our distribution where the smart money exits their long positions by selling above an old high where buy stops would be resting. So those buy stops would be hit, floods the market with buy stops, buyers at a higher price. Smart money is going to sell their long positions to higher buying interest traders in the form of their buy stops being tagged. Okay, and what does accumulation look like in a bear condition? We have a consolidation and price moves higher, which would be the manipulation. Now, if you look at the left side of the chart, you see a double top. That's exactly where what buy stops would reside. Okay, lesser informed traders would have their buy stops resting above that. It would view that as a stiff resistance price point, and those levels are too clean. The market will, in fact, want to go through there, probe it for buy stops. Those buy stops are going to be triggered. Anyone that's short is now allowed to be profitable in the move going lower. So they're neutralizing their shorts by hitting their buy stops. Also, breakout artists that see that equal high to the left of the chart and the consolidation that move out of that, they would be buying that on a breakout or trying to buy strength in their eyes. Both are incorrect. And what we're actually seeing is the market driving higher to pair traders to buy higher or at a high price and short sellers on the smart money camp, they're going to be selling short to those individuals that want to buy at a high price to make a profit as the market moves eventually lower. Towards the end of the day, we see the distribution cycle come in where short holders in the smart money camp are going to be looking to collapse their short positions. To get out of a short position, you have to buy it back. You have to look for an area to run below old lows. If you look at the original consolidation, 20 pips below that, that's where we see the low of the day form. It's exactly where smart money would be collapsing their short positions for a day trade. And we see the ending cycle there, distribution. Smart money collapsing their short in the form of buying it back at an area where sellers below the market would be interested in selling. Overall, if you understand this concept, and there's lots more of information that's coming way in by way of my tutorials, you can look at the marketplace like this and see the original consolidation here in the green. The market reaches down below the consolidation into an area of liquidity, which is 10 pips below equal lows. Those sell stops are triggered where smart money would be buying. Once those sell stops are tripped, they're buying the low of the day. The market rallies up. We have an expansion move or range expansion up into a move of running 20 pips above the old high. Then your distribution cycle goes into the marketplace and there's a complete daily range using the power three concept that I've outlined here. So hopefully you found this teaching insightful. There'll be more built on this with the future tutorials. And until next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.